So welcome to this inaugural game of Chain of Command on the channel. Um, it's been some time coming because I've had to get it organised and get a few bits and pieces together. But this will potentially be a pilot and a trial run for more of the same kind of video in the future. Uh, as you can see here, I've set the table up already. So this is some of the terrain uh, and the two forces. Uh, the miniatures we're going to be using today uh, are almost all from Warlord Games, um, with the exception of the vehicles, which are both from Rubicon models. So today we're going to be featuring uh, an SS Panzer Grenadier platoon, as you can see here, this is some of them. Uh, and they will be going up against these guys on the right, and this is a British uh, rifle platoon on the right-hand side. Uh, so the Panzer Grenadiers and the Brief Rifle Platoon are normally going to be from the uh, first SS Panzer Grenadier Division and then the uh, British, because I've actually painted these markings on them, they are from the 2nd Battalion East Yorkshire Regiment, which was part of 8th Infantry Brigade from uh, the 3rd British Infantry Division. Uh, in terms of the forces, so the uh, Panzer Grenadier Platoon uh, will be rated as regulars for the purposes of this, and they consist of uh, three squads, each with uh, two light machine guns and a junior leader, and then commanded here um, by the platoon commander, in this case not an officer, just a doughty uh, senior non-commissioned officer, and they should have a Panzer Shrek team, but I realised at the last minute that they don't actually have an SS Panzer Shrek team, which I'll rectify for the future, um, so I've had to use a Falschirm Jäger Panzer Shrek team instead to stand in in the meantime. Um, the British Rifle Platoon consists of the Platoon Commander and the Platoon Sergeant, as you can see there, a 2-inch mortar team and a Piat team, and then three infantry sections, which you can see around them there. These are the three infantry sections, each uh, consisting of 10 men with a junior leader and a Bren gun, split into a 6-man rifle team and a Bren gun team. Um, the scenario we're going to be using for this is the patrol and now I know um, for sort of introductory scenarios and getting back into the rules a lot of people tend to rec recommend the probe scenario as being a, a bit better for getting into the game again but I just really wanted to get some figures on the table and, and roll some dice and get back into the game so this is going to be a stand-up um, patrol mission where each of the forces will roll to see where their patrol markers which you can see here come onto the table and depending on the dice roll, they might come in on the left, centre or right-hand sections of the table and then correspondingly on the other side of the table. In terms of support and support points, um, I haven't used the usual system. Uh, I just decided to put some things on the table that I wanted to see. So in the case of both sides, they've each got uh, an attached machine gun team, a heavy machine gun team, so in the German case, uh, they've got an MG42 team there, as you can see lurking, and then each, as you've probably already guessed, is going to have uh, a tank as well. So in the German's case, a uh, Panzer IV, uh, and then as we pan over here to the British, the British have got their Vickers machine gun team, uh, and then a Sherman tank from uh, 27th Armoured Brigade there. And so that's the two forces. Uh, the way it will work is the machine gun team is available immediately for both sides, and then if the turn ends at any point during the game, uh, the tanks will then become available for both sides, but will still have to be brought on as per the, the normal sketch for bringing things onto the table. I have already uh, done the uh, morale, so in the case of the Germans, they'll be starting at 8, uh, and the British will be starting at 9, some pretty low morale, morale rolls for those. Um, but yeah, that's all the sort of pre-game admin done in terms of support and morale. So we'll move on to the patrol phase and uh, we'll be right back for that. So that's the patrol phase complete and the jump off points distributed onto the board. Uh, so after that phase, it turned out that the uh, German side have got uh, three jump off points on each side. So there's one here in the woods, there's one there behind that fence, and there's also one on the top floor of that building, um, which I will take the roof off later as it becomes necessary. And then from the British point of view, um, they were slightly hemmed in, uh, so they've got one patrol marker there on the road, a one there behind that hedge, 
and there is also one just there in the woods. There we are. Uh, so that's the jump off markers complete, so we'll go ahead and get started with the first phase. Actually, just a quick aside, as I realise that I haven't discussed uh, the terrain on the table or the objectives for the game. So the objective for the scenario, the patrol, is simply to uh, break the opposing side, reduce their force morale enough, uh, and get them to withdraw from the table. In terms of terrain, so the uh, small hedgerows, these ones here, uh, and those ones there, uh, are going to be light cover and you can see across them um, without any impediment. The bigger hedgerows, such as here and here, and on the far side there. Um, those will also be light cover, but you can only be seen within four inches of them. Uh, and then for the areas of woods as well, same idea, um, four inches in you can't be seen. Uh, and the buildings and the uh, walls will be uh, hard cover. Uh, the fences will also be light cover, and you can't be seen if you're further than four inches from them. Uh, and that's the table. The, uh, the various different types of fields and so on, so you've got the ploughed fields over there, um, and then you've also got some other fields in the back of that building as well. Um, for the purposes of this, just make things straightforward. They won't have any impact on the game. And if the uh, armour vehicles do come on later on in the game, um, I know they've got to come in within a certain distance of the entry point, which would be a road normally, um, but because the tables have been divided up into thirds, uh, what we'll do is just say they can be brought in um, wherever practicable in those original deployment thirds. Uh, so from the German point of view, um, they would have to come on somewhere in this middle third here. Uh, and then from the British point of view, they're going to have to somehow squeeze a, a Sherman in along that back side there. Not through the hedge, um, probably into that open ground there, which is not ideal for deploying an armoured vehicle. But I think that road entrance point um, might actually be slightly outside the deployment area, um, but we'll have to check that later if it becomes relevant. Um, so that's the terrain. Uh, back to the first phase. Okay, so phase one. The British will be going first if they've got the higher force morale, um, but only slightly. Um, theirs will be the white command dice on this side, and then the Germans have the black command dice on that side. So let's go ahead and go with phase one. Oop. So that's an immediate double phase, a one, a three, a five, and two sixes. Uh, so we will go ahead and do something with those. So that first dice roll, we use the uh, three for the British to bring on number one section here in these trees. And they haven't done anything else because there's no point putting them on overwatch or anything like that because they can either see anything nor be seen until they get close to the hedgerow. And then with the one, we brought on the Vickers team and placed it in the building over here. Uh, with the idea being that it will keep an eye on this uh, rather large building on the left hand side of the board which has got a uh, German jump off marker in it. Uh, and then the rest was a single chain of command point uh, and two sixes which created a double phase. So for double phases in this game uh, we're just going to do them exactly as they sound in one sense which is that if you roll double six you get a double phase which means you go again but that's it, you can't have any more double phases thereafter. So even if you know you roll two more double sixes in the next, you won't get another double phase. But if you roll three, it, it will end the turn. Uh, so we'll go ahead and roll for the second British phase. Uh, so that is, that is another double phase which is discarded, another chain of command point, uh, and two ones. So we'll have to have a think about what we're going to do with that, because we haven't got any more teams and everything else all on the board, so I think we'll probably pass the rest of the turn on to the Germans' phase. So we'll add that chain of command point, and then we'll go ahead to the German side of things. Uh, so six, something for the Germans, the chain of command point, uh, four and two twos. So there's a chain of command point. So the Germans have chosen to deploy two sections into this large building on this side. As you can see there. So one section's gone uh, along the wall and hedgerow outside downstairs. And then another section's deployed directly, sorry, squad for the Germans, has deployed directly into the upstairs floor of the building. Um, 
although they didn't come in with any command initiatives. There's not a huge amount of threat from the Vickers over there at the moment because uh, it's, uh, it's an uncommanded team, so it might not necessarily activate as readily. And also, there's a little bit of overmatch there because they can bring four light machine guns to bear on that single heavy machine gun, potentially. Uh, but that's the Germans' turn. And so, on to the British. So, that's a pretty good roll. One, two, two, three, and four. So the British player has used a 2 to deploy another section in this wooded area here, a 4 to deploy the platoon commander, who is behind this tree, and the platoon commander then used one of his command initiatives to send forward the section in front of him, which moved forward 4 inches and it's approaching the hedge. Then the 2 inch mortar team deployed there, just behind that building out of the way, and then with a 3 this section is deployed and the uh, section commander is going to have them fire at uh, the German team just here behind that hedgerow. It's the only thing that they can see and the Bren gun and... Uh, how many riflemen? One, two, three, four, five, six. The Bren gun and three riflemen are going to shoot at them. Um, I did realise that because the two buildings, one containing uh, the machine gun and one containing the section, are actually outside of 18 inches of each other, they are technically unaware of each other's presence until the other one opens fire. Um, so although, yes, the players know that uh, there is teams in each building, they can't actually engage each other at the moment. So that section is now going to open fire at those Germans over there uh, with nine dice. Uh, so, given that all there are intervening obstacles, there's a fence line and a hedge in the way, we're going to say that it's hard cover. Uh, so, one to four is nothing. Uh, so, that's two points of shock and a casualty on that team just there. That's the result of the section firing. They've got two points of shock and they've suffered the first casualty of the game with one of the riflemen in that LMG team going down. Um, they can't spread the hits because uh, the team, whilst visible potentially behind the wall, can't actually be seen by the section that's firing between the two buildings. And so that is the result of the British fire. They have got another two, um, but they're not going to use that for anything because they haven't actually got anything else to bring in. The only thing that the um, British platoon's now got in reserve is the tank. But that isn't available unless the turn ends. So we'll go on to the German phase. Right, so German phase. Whoops. So a one, two, four, three, and a five. So that's a, a chain of command point up to two. A one, a three, and two fours. We've got a section, a team, a team, and the senior leader left. So I think what we'll probably do is uh, bring on the MG42 team bring on the remaining section under its own steam uh, and then bring on the uh, platoon sergeant uh, to command it. That four is going to be lost, classic German role. Um, yeah, that's what we'll do. So we'll go ahead and bring those on to support the two sections already on the table down there uh, and see what we can do about repelling that British build-up on one side and also this two-section advance towards the jump-off point in the trees on the right-hand side by the wheat field. So the three was used by the German squad in front of the building to rally off the two shock that it had. Then the machine gun team came in on a one, so there's now an MG42 heavy machine gun roll in that room. The senior leader deployed on the four, he's used all three of his command initiatives. Uh, one, first of all, to direct the other team down into the bottom of the building and towards the back door. And then with his remaining two command initiatives, he's going to activate the MG42 to fire back at the section on the hedge line. And then his third command initiative to activate this team, which is the other team from the squad he's just divided in half, to also fire at the section of the hedge line. And as you can see, they are just there behind that fence. So we shall go ahead and do that. Uh, so it's going to be a light cover 
because of the fence line. However, the heavy machine gun will reduce that um, by one, so they will basically count as being in the open, which is not good news for that British section. So, ten dice for the MD42. Eight, nine, ten. So, ten dice for the MG42, first of all, counting as in the open. So, ones and twos go away. And then, fives and sixes are casualties. Ugh! So, the section takes one shock and six casualties. That is. that's pretty bad. <laughs> Okay, right, so there's their point of shock, enjoy that, uh, and then we'll divide the casualties up, so that's three, three on the Bren team and three on the rifle team, so the Bren is definitely down, the rifle team's lost three, although one of these might be um, the junior leader, well it is the junior leader because there's six casualties, so the junior leader's been hit as well, okay, right, I need to work this out. I've just realised, of course, I've done this completely wrong because I've simply been rolling on the um, results table, if you like, as to the effectiveness of the fire. I've not actually rolled to hit to begin with. So we're just, we'll just continue with that German section having lost one guy. They've already rallied the shock off. But I will um, rectify this. So these are regulars. So what they've actually achieved is an effective range, because they're over 18. Oh no, it's a triple mode heavy machine gun. So they are in fact at close range. So four to six. So they've scored six hits is what's actually happened. And now we're all to see what happens though. So that's gonna be three on the Bren and three on the rifle team. I did think that was horrendous when I first did it. I apologize, that's because I haven't played this for a while. So first of all, we'll do the three hits on the Bren team. So that is actually two lots of nothing and one kill on the Bren. And then the rifle team, that is three points of shock. So I will do that again. So what we'll do is that's one guy removed from the Bren team. And then we'll need three points of shock. So first of all, we'll all see if the leader's been hit. Which he has not. So there we go. That's a lot better. That's a lot better than the section essentially being wiped out by a single round of firing. There we go. So having restored some sanity and remembered the rules, the rifle team's got three points of shock and the Bren team has suffered a casualty. So now the uh, LMG team from that divided German squad is firing at the same British section. I've already rolled the dice and it's fives and sixes because they're at effective range. So they've scored three hits. Uh, and that's two on the Bren and one on the rifle. Uh, these, however, do count as being in light cover because it's not a heavy machine gun. So a six and a four for light cover. So that's a kill and a point of shock on the Bren. Bad news. And then the rifle team has got a point of shock. So we'll go ahead and apply those. And then that is the end of the German phase. So at the end of that German phase, a heavy round of firing from the MG42 and the LMG team uh, has done pretty good work on the British section that opened fire first. And as you can see there, there are four shock on the uh, rifle team. And then this slightly beleaguered Bren team on the far end there is reduced to just the Bren gunner stood next to the section commander. And he's got a point of shock. So they're not in the best shape. So let's go ahead to the British retaliation. The British phase. So two chain of command points, getting that up to four. A one, a one, and a two. Not ideal, because could do with the platoon sergeant to come on and assist on that side of the field. But uh, yeah, we'll see what we can do. Uh, so on this side, the trading section's moved up six inches to try and draw alongside that number one section. Um, over here, um, number three sections is going to have to stay a bit beleaguered for now because the 
heavy machine gun is going to fire back, the Vickers is going to engage the MG42 building to building, and then we're going to try and put down some 2 inch mortar smoke to screen number 3 section. So we'll go ahead and roll up the Vickers on the MG team. So it too has 10 dice. It is firing at close range, so it's going to be fours, fives, and sixes. Because it's a heavy machine gun. Uh, so four misses, and then it's regulars in hardcover, goes down to light. Um, so one, two, three will be nothing. So that's four lots of nothing, and then two points of shock on the MG42. So I'll put a couple of points of shock in there. Uh, and then what we'll try and do is land uh, some smoke. So, for that we need this handy. Three inch smoke template. And we're gonna try and put it down here in an effort to screen the section, I think. And then we need to find the appropriate smoke table. And that came up as a five on the table, that's a hit. So there's now a little ball of two inch mortar smoke just sat there in front of uh, number three section shielding them, and hopefully sparing them from taking a further battering in the German activation. So let's go ahead with that. So that's two chain of command points, uh, a useless six, so up to four chain of command points. Command points. And then two fours, which um, one of which is going to be useless. So we use the four to activate the felled bevel. Uh, and then let's see what we wanted to do. Go to take some shock off the MG42 and then have it fire. Could have him manoeuvre the team that's downstairs, but for now, I think we want to wait for the remaining squad to come on. So we'll take those two shock off and then we'll have the MG42 fire back at the Vickers um, in a duel of the machine guns. Uh, so same dice as before. Needing fours. Mwah, pretty good roll. So that's a grand total of seven hits and then as before one, two and three will be nothing. So four lots of nothing, and then three sixes. So the Vickers team has quite unfortunately suffered three casualties, reducing it to just two crew, which is less than ideal. If that had been three sixes from a HE, if for example that had been an infantry gun, those three sixes would also have knocked out the Vickers, which would have just left two crewmen stood there without any weapons. Um, and also, I have checked that ball of smoke from the two-inch mortar is just over 12 inches away from the mortar team, so it's not within the minimum distance. So that was the German phase, so I shall switch back to the Brits. Uh, so that is three chain of command points. So they now have a chain of command dice. There we go. And an extra point, use the six, and a three allowing us to do something with a section. Uh, so I think what we'll do is have this corporal immediately remove two shock from that section for his activation, and that's all the Brits can do. So on to the Germans. So uh, a six, and then a one, two twos, and a four. So the to what the third squad for the German platoon is deployed into these trees here to try and hold up the two British sections that are moving up on this side. It's also needed because otherwise those British sections will capture that jump off point. Did consider having them deploy at this fence, um, but we're deciding we're going to mount a forward defence against the Brits there rather than giving up some uh, force morale and then trying to hold off uh, twice their number on that jump off point. And then the other two was used to have this squad move out, and they moved out at the double, taking advantage of the fact there's smoke in the way at the moment to try and move up and close the range with the uh, British section behind the fence over here. 
And then the Fail Devil is using his three command initiatives. So he's going to use, well, he's used one already to move half of that infantry squad out the back door uh, into the garden area to move around the side of the building. And his other two command initiatives he's going to use to have the machine gun, the heavy machine gun team, and the light machine gun team engage that Vickers over there. Having declared to do that, however, the British have promptly used up their chain of command dice to interrupt, uh, and so will then move the Vickers team out of the way. So building movement-wise, it's just going to descend a floor and move to the back of the building where it can't be seen, um, thus neatly getting it out of the way uh, of that German firing. So with no other targets, we'll go back to the British phase. So six. Two fours and two threes. So um, that enables us to bring on the platoon sergeant to assist uh, on that side. We'll activate the lieutenant here to move the two sections forward. So we'll roll their movement uh, at 2d6 per. Or we could do 1d6 and fire at half effect because the Germans are going to be visible. Unless they don't make it to the hedge, of course which would be a problem. And so have that. The right hand section is more likely to make it, so 1d6. And they do, so they're going to move and fire at half effect. This section is less likely to, so we'll go with two dice for them. Which is 10, because uh, they can't double because they're in the woods. Uh, so that takes care of a three. I mean, sorry, a four for the lieutenant. And then. Yeah, three on that side. So we'll have the one of the threes. We'll remove two points of shock, one from the rifle team and one from the Bren team. Whilst we're still shielded by the smoke, we'll use a four to deploy the platoon sergeant over there as well. And then we'll still have a three left over as well. So yeah, that's the result of the British movement. That's an impressive lineup. Two full British sections here, lined up along the fence, and you can see the lieutenant at the back, um, looking pretty Rambo and pleased with himself. Uh, the furthest section is going to fire at these um, Panzer Grenadiers nearby. Um, in the meantime, over here, the platoon sergeant has moved in. There he is, pointing something out important. Well, he's pointing at that point of shock because with his first command initiative, we're going to have him remove that from the section. And then with his other two, he's going to use one to move the Vickers out of that building onto the jump-off point to defend the street and the garden, um, whilst the smoke's blocking the line of sight, so they can do that. And then with the other one, they might have him move that section up uh, and see if they can't sp either spread out better along the fence. I think that's probably the best option, actually, is to take up a defensive position, what with the Panzer Grenadiers closing on the other side, wouldn't like to risk trying to beat the Panzer Grenadiers into this house uh, and ending up in a bit of a slap fight in and around it. Um, so first of all we'll do the firing over here though. So we've got the uh, Bren guns going to fire into the Germans. So that's three dice for the Bren gun. Plus we've got how many? One, two, one, two, three, four riflemen. Um, so that's an extra two dice. So just the five dice. Um, they are within close range. So that'll be a four to six. So one does nothing, so four hits. That's not bad. Um, and then it's regulars in light cover. One, two, three, four, five, six. That is atrocious. It, that's nothing, in fact. That is absolutely nothing. So they spot the Germans and fire off a few shots and achieve nothing. So we'll move the Brits over there and then come back for the German phase. Um, so that's completed. So as you can see, the machine gun teams moved out into the road to cover that jump off point in case the uh, nasty Germans come bursting through that smoke or it clears. Uh, this section has been shuffled down the road. Um, hoping to be able to reorganise and put some extra bodies in the Bren gun team next turn. But fortunately the Bren gun, which is at the far end just there, is safely out of the line of sight in the Germans in that building and is also still covering the courtyard. 
Meanwhile, at least there are a few rifles now covering the far side of this building. But uh, we shall move on to the Germans in the meantime. So... So, two ones, three, four, and five. So, chain command point up to five. Okay. So that takes that out of the way. And then that's not a bad roll, actually, because it means we can use the fell bevel for something. Uh, yeah. I think the first thing we'll do is this, this squad here needs to get some shots off. So, it will fire... Um, for argument's sake, at this squad here, firing at the nearest Bren team in there. And the whole squad will fire using that three. So, take the three out. Five, six, and eight for the light machine gun. Actually, there's two lots of light machine guns, isn't it? Four, five, six, seven, eight. And then... What's that? Two riflemen sparing each team. Okay, so there's an extra rifleman in one of those squads. So we need an extra dice, actually. Um, I just have to use a white dice. As I've got a more blue one, available. That's quite a lot of shots coming the bricks away, and they're in close range. Um, so we're going to be hitting on fours, fives, and sixes. Can't quite get all the dice. Come on. Right, four, fives, and sixes. So we take out all these. Not brilliant. Have to do. Uh, so right then, so dividing them up. There are a lot of teams around there, so there are two within four inches, which is about the width of this uh, laser pointer. Actually, no, it's not true, is it? Which is about that far. Uh, so at least they're in rifle teams in range. This rifle team's in range. Actually, I think the Bren gun team at this end is probably out, so it's between those three teams. Um, and there are three leaders in there as well, so there's a healthy chance of someone um, getting some good news. But uh, So we'll split those. Neatly, three on each. Uh, so we'll start these three. Uh, the rifle team on the left-hand side as we look at it. So the two and two fives. They're in light cover, so that's nothing. And then two points of shock. Uh, the, ri the rifle team, sorry, the Bren gun team next along. That is two dead. Not ideal, but I suppose the Bren gun team was the focus target originally that they were shooting at. And then finally the rifle team from the other section that just happens to be nearby, uh, achieving nothing and a point of shock. So that is the effect of the Panzer Grenadiers. The squad that turned up and fired at half effect probably wishes it didn't because two of the three Bren gun team got knocked over. The rifle team took two shock. And then this neighbouring rifle team also took a point of shock. What we also need to do is roll to see if any or all of the leaders were hit as well, of course. So uh, with two casualties, we shall roll one dice. And everybody's fine. So just the two Bren gunners got taken down. Okay. So that's the three, and then a one, and a one, and a four. So, I mean, the fell level can't do a huge amount. And we've got two wands to activate discrete teams. So I think what we'll probably do is do a little bit of movement and come back with that. So the separated team on this side of the building has not moved very far at all. They're just shuffling around. Uh, this squad, the senior leader, the Phil Vevel, shouted out the window at them because I judged them to be pretty much close enough that they needed to move up to the fence, which they've achieved, and as you can see, some of them have probably just noticed there are some Brits around the corner of the house. Uh, and then with his other two command initiatives, I realised, well, of course, they can actually see down here, being on the top floor, to this squad that's just been shot up. So he's going to order both the MG42 and the LMG uh, from that team to fire down into this squad, which is not good news for the squad. 
So from the first instance, the MD42 with the 10 dice. Uh, it's light cover, they are going to count as being in the open because it's an MG42. I did consider saying that um, you know, the trees and so on might make it hard cover, but I haven't done that already. I'm just going to apply it consistently. If they were further back, maybe, but then they wouldn't be able to be seen anyway. I'm just going to play it as, as, as light cover. So they're in the open for the purposes of MG42, uh, which scores as fives because it's that effective. So that is an awful roll. They scored one hit. Um, but it is in the open, so there's a good chance it will affect somebody. It's on the target rifle team. And that's a three. So that is one point of shock. So we will apply that. So now I've got three there along the hedge. And then the light machine gun team will also fire with a quite healthy eight dice, but not reducing cover. And then there's a single rifleman that can see to join in. So fives again. Two hits. Uh, so because of the team nearby, it'd be one on the rifle team and one on the solitary Brennan gun crewman. So the rifle team, there's nothing at the Brennan gun. I was expecting him to die. <laughs> Uh, he, that's nothing because it doesn't reduce cover. So apart from that point of shot from the MG42, they actually got away pretty well with that. Uh, so now let's see what the Brits can do in return. These are their order dice. So six, nothing. Two ones and two twos. Not, not brilliant. Not brilliant at all. Uh, I suppose we can have these sections fire back and maybe have that one fire as well. Mm, yeah, I think what we might do is we'll go for some smoke, among other things. We'll have the, the two inch mortar try and block out. We'll do that last though, so we'll put that's the three inch smoke marker for in a minute, and then that's, that's a one down. With another one, there's a couple of riflemen there that could fire at those Panzer Grenadiers. We're going to use both twos to have these two sections fire at the uh, Panzer Grenadiers, I've just given them a battering. Uh, so, uh, this section will fire first. Uh, so that's six dice for the Bren, plus one, two, three, four riflemen. I think we'll add them to that, so that'll be ten dice. And then uh, this section as well, so the Bren gun loses, I think is it two? two firepower for being down to one crew, so it'll only be four dice. And then there are four riflemen, uh, we'll lose one because they've got three points of shock, so three, uh, so that's seven, seven, yeah, so 17 in total to fire against those Panthers going to Deers. Sliding in there, defending their jump off point pretty well. So 17, there's five, 10, 15, 17. So they're in close range, needing four. That's the first lot, there's three more. Not bad. And then it's light cover. So one, two, three does nothing. Oh dear. That is a whiff. Definitely, distinctly, <laughs> a whiff. However, one point of shock inflicted on, let's say, this team on this side. Good. Brilliant. That's two, that's two sections there, not doing very well for themselves. And then that last one at the end will have a couple of riflemen fire um, at these guys. So there's the two riflemen on the end. So fours, they get one hit on this team at the end here. And then we shall roll the dice. See what happens. Oof, almost a six, but nothing. So they achieve nothing with a couple of rifle shots and pot shot it off at the end. Uh, and then finally, we just need to dice for the smoke. There we go. So it was a five and the smoke has landed where it's
where it's been directed to hopefully try and suppress some of the fire from the building up there. I think actually there's a slight error there because I think it's blocking the MG42 no, it's blocking the LMG but not the heavy machine gun. Okay. All right. Well, no mind. That's why they've got more than one smoke round, I guess. Uh, so two chain of command points. So that is a chain of command dice for the Panzer Grenadiers, plus an extra pip. Uh, the six is nothing, and then a two and a three. So the three will go to this squad over here. So with one command initiative, he's going to take that away to get rid of the shock, and then with the other, he's going to have them keep firing away in response to the Brits in the hedge line. And then with the two... Okay, with the three, the squad in the woods here is going to fire back at the Brits. And then over there, we, can, we can't use the two for the detached team that's behind the corner of this building, because although it has... It, it's become a team, because it's been divided in half. It has got the um, squad leader in it, but can't be activated on that. So I think we use the two to have this squad, in inverted commas, fire, which in practice just means having a machine gun and a one rifleman fire back at those guys over there. <laughs> I was wondering how bright this uh, green laser is. It's like the Death Star shining its aiming spot across the table. Anyway, uh, irrelevant. So this squad is going to fire again. And they've got the same number of dice as before. So it's always blue dice, possibly white dice. And their target this time, and it's pretty well done. I think they'll just keep firing at the Bren gun. Pretty much. That's what they were firing at before, and see if they can uh, take it out. Well, all these dice. Not brilliant shooting. But pretty poor shooting. Uh, so light cover. So one, two, three is nothing. So that's two points of shock and a brain gun. I just realised I forgot to allocate this. And there are three teams involved. Right, so we'll roll for each of them. So the for the casualty. A one or a two is the Brennan gun, a three or four is its own section of rifles, five or six the other. Right, so he dies. Well, it becomes a casualty as a prefer. So that, that Brennan gun is out of action. And then two points of shock, so split between the rifle teams, I guess. So one, two, three, it's the section with the Brennan gun that's just been wiped out, which it is for both. Uh, so... Pretty disastrous, despite the low number of hits. So that rifle team has now got five points of shock, and the section Bren gun is down. The Bren's down. Uh, as it says in the rule book, not a cry you want to hear when you're in the middle of a firefight. Uh, and then over here, that machine gun is going to fire back, resting on the fence with a, with a rifleman in support. Uh, those two riflemen that have had the temerity to have a shot at it from that end. So, four, five, six, seven, eight, plus one more. And that's only three hits. Uh, they can't see anybody else, so it has to only go on that team and probably only those two guys. So let's just see light cover. Uh, of course, so... <laughs> One miss, one dies, and, well, becomes a casualty, and one point of shock. So that's these guys here, returning the favour at these guys here. And that's one for them, and take off the chap on the end. Pretty effective shooting from the Panzer Grenadiers again. So, time for some good dice rolls, I think, on the command dice for the Brits. Uh, they need to sort out these two sections on this side 
and do something about this encroaching Panzer Grenadier squad um, by the buildings. So let's see what they can manage. Brilliant. <laughs> so that's a six out. So it's three ones and a two. Okay. <laughs> Good. Uh, all right. So I think when we will use a one of the ones um, to try and put in a bit more of two inch mortar smoke to try and mask the MG42 having fudged the positioning of that last smoke. I've just realised actually that Bren guns have another casualty, so let's roll and see if any of the leaders were hit. Nope. Right, so we'll come back for the smoke in a minute. So that section is the Bren, six plus four riflemen, so ten dice. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hitting on fours. That's like an average roll, five hits, and then one, two, three does nothing. Oh, I haven't allocated them again. Okay. That's, that's two dead and one point of shock. So a one, two, three on the left, four, five, six on the right. So point of shock, left, right for the casualty. So w one for each, and a point of shock. So, point of shot goes in there, and potentially, anyway, two riflemen. So let's check to see if one of those is actually the squad leader, which it is not. So that's those two taken out of the way. And then, three inch smoke. All right, let's try and obscure the MG42 next as well, placing it there. A one. Mm. Oh dear. So the result of that one was that the smoke moved six inches to the right of the target point. I've moved it six inches to the right from the perspective of the mortar team. So that is to say that it was here and six inches to the right from the mortar team's perspective would be that way. That might be wrong, but that makes sense to me. Uh, okay. So the German roll. Turn end. So that's all the smoke's going to disappear, and the tanks are about to become available to both. And it's a double phase. So that's potentially quite good. A three and a four. Okay, we can do something with that, I think. So, not great news for the Brits. Potentially this Panzer IV is about to roll on. However, there aren't any senior leaders off the table, so if I'm reading this right, then it needs a 4, 5, 6 to come on. Which it does not, so no Panzer IV, which is a shame, because I wanted to put the model on the table. But no Panzer IV for the Germans for the moment, however, they also had a 4 left over from that turn end. You'll notice all the smoke has gone. I did also roll the morale test for the team wiped out from that section, and it came up with no effect, um, which is lucky, because both sides have got relatively low starting force morales. So with the four, then, the senior leader up here is going to use... Hmm, one command initiative to have the MG42 target that Vickers, which is actually going to be in the open, I just realised, of course, because it's only got the light cover of that fence in the way. So you'll have that fire. And then two command initiatives to fire the LMG team from that squad over here. I'm just trying to figure out if they can actually see the Bren gun team. I think that tree probably negates them picking out the Bren gun team, actually. So I'll just use one of those command initiatives um, to try and pile on some more pain uh, to the once promising flank movement by these two British sections. Uh, so first things first, uh, 10 dice for the MG42 team at the Vickers. So needing fives, 
I'm getting three. Uh, ones and twos are nothing. <laughs> okay. Good. Team wiped out. Two. That's nothing again. I know because I rolled the two on the other one. So, despite the fact that the Vickers has just been removed from the game, apparently nobody's bothered, but I suppose it's an attached weapons team, so perhaps they didn't know them very well. Um, and then the LMG team will fire its eight dice plus a rifleman at that rifle team over there. Uh, needing fives because of the range, so only two hits. Uh, it just in range of that other rifle team, so that's one on each. So the original target, nothing. And then a kill, no, a casualty, on the other rifle team, of course. So I'll take him out. Right, checking leaders, so for that gaggle of leaders over there, um, another. Dice with death, no pun intended. That teach me to uh, make jokes, because that's one of the leaders somewhere in there has been hit. There are two section commanders, uh, and the platoon commander stood in there. So on a one or a two, it's the lieutenant. On a three or a four, it's the far section commander. Uh, on a five or a six, it's the near section commander. So it's this near-hand section commander, the one that's actually just taken the loss. So, sorry, we'll pop that rifleman back in. And we shall see what happens to him. Okay, so there's two sets of dice there. That is the five for the corporal who's just been lightly wounded. So he's going to lose a command initiative, but is otherwise fine. He hasn't been um, knocked out. And then... This is because the platoon sergeant was just behind the vicars when they got wiped out, and uh, turns out actually one of those hits was on him. Fortunately, it came up a six on the second dice, uh, so he has also lost a command initiative, but it does mean the vicars will be back in play, uh, albeit with only one crew. Um, I don't fancy much for its chances in the next couple of turns. And there you go, that's the aftermath, so that's... Red markers to indicate that the Vickers is down to just the guy manning the weapon. The platoon sergeant's lost a command initiative. And this section commander's lost an initiative as well. It actually kind of makes sense, bizarrely enough, because, of course, that platoon sergeant is directly behind the Vickers and thus in the line of fire from the MG42. And that section commander is directly in the line of fire from the LMG. So, there you go. Uh, but it's not going great for the Brits as a consequence, as we're going to have to do two um, leader wounded rolls, I've just realised. So that is a six for the junior leader wounded, that's two off the force morale, and senior leader wounded four, that's one off the force morale. So those injuries have reduced the Brits by three down to just six, which is not great. Right, so we'll move back onto the Brit turn. So they've got a one, two, and three fours. So one of those fours is going to go begging immediately. And then they've got two fours. So, can't get the tank on. Could do with, could do with a Sherman to support. That would be good. So, with those command dice, we've used the platoon sergeant over there, has used one dice to move himself just to that next to that opening in the hedge. He's just now out of sight of the um, MG42 team. And then with his other two initiatives, he's taken the point of shock off the rifle team from the section next to him, and then ordered it to fall back over this hedge to put some more uh, obstacles and distance between themselves and the oncoming Panzer Grenadiers. Uh, the Vickers is kind of stuck uh, because it's down to one man, so it can't be moved. Uh, and I'm not aware that there's like a serve qui rule in this game or something, that he can just abandon the weapon. Maybe he can, 
But I suppose he could be ordered to fire the weapon, so he'll just have to have, do that and have a chunter. And then the one that was rolled will use to try and put two inch mortar smoke down in front of him after he does that. Uh, and if I realise there's a serve keeper rule in the meantime, uh, I'll do that next time I activate him. Meanwhile, the lieutenant here was also activated. He's taken one shock off the rifle team on the left hand side. And then, with his other two command initiatives, he's going to order the two sections uh, to fire into the Panzer Grenadiers in front of them. So that is going to be a total of uh, four riflemen, less two, so two shots coming from that section. Uh, and this section is six dice plus says ten, so fourteen dice in total. Uh, so here's the first seven. Here's the next seven, needing fours. So that is four on the left hand team and three on the right hand team. So two nothings and a point of shock. And then two nothings and two points of shock. So the Vickers can fire, it's down to just seven dice, it loses three firepower now that it's got a single crewman. Um, but he's decided to uh, try and retaliate uh, as he can't move the weapon and all his comrades are down. So with seven dice, uh, needing fives, so he gets two hits. Uh, reduces cover by one, so it's a light cover. So he inflicts Two points of shock, which is something, uh, on the MG42 team in this building here. So there we go, add that to them. Uh, and then we just need to see what happens to the ball of smoke. Two, I think that's six inches to the left. Uh, that smoke round landed about where you can see the hole in the roof of that building actually. So maybe that's where it came from. Uh, but as such, I've discarded it, because it's not an easy way of perching the smoke on there, and it's essentially pointless, because it's just on the roof of the building. Uh, so we'll just progress on to the German phase instead. So, that'll be a double phase. And a three and two fours. Okay, so... Take the double phase out for now. With a three, let's see if the Panzer IV comes on. Which it does. Good. Good news. Although not for the East Yorkshire guys. So the Panzer IV is on. Uh, as I said at the beginning of the game, I've deployed it in the, the, de the jump off third that the Germans used at the beginning of the game. Um, I mean, this is all still their, relatively speaking, their table edge. Um, and I've deployed it on this side because it seemed ridiculous to deploy it on the other side completely next to the um, ongoing firefight. Um, so not great news for the British, but it is going to have to work its way around to get into a useful position in the meantime. Uh, and then with the two fours, one's going to go begging because we've only got the fell level. And then the other is going to be used uh, once more to activate the MG42 to try and finish off the pesky Vickers team. Uh, and then this LMG team to continue trying to support the firefight um, over there along the hedge line. Uh, so we'll do that now. So that's one different politics. Uh, and it loses one for having two shock. And that is one hit. Could, could be the hit that counts. It's not, it does nothing. Sorry, if you can hear a scratching noise in the background, that's my dog. Uh, and then the LMG team, with actually the same number of dice, is going to fire at that rifle team on the end there. So, three hits. Uh, two nothings and, an and another point of shock to replace the one that was removed earlier. Enjoy. 
And that's it. However, the Germans did get a double phase, so on to the next. Oops. There we go. Two ones and two threes. Okay, so with the one, we'll have the heavy MG42 fire at the Vickers, and then with the three, um, we'll have to do something with this squad here, which is getting a little bit more shock than it probably wants. Uh, so the MG42, first of all, we have nine dice because it's got two shock. Uh, to fire at the Vickers in the back corner. So hitting on fives is a pretty good roll. Scored six hits uh, and reduces the cover to in the open. So I don't think the Vickers is going to uh, get through this. And it doesn't. So it killed several times over on, on that occasion. So that's the Vickers removed. Uh, so we shall roll to see the impact on force morale. So uh, for support, support wiped out. Uh, that is a minus two. So that brings the Brits down and loses them a command dice, which is not ideal for them. And then for a three, we're going to activate this uh, squad leader in here, and he's got three points of shock on this machine gun team, and then a point of shock on this machine gun team. This way around. Uh, so he's going to activate the whole squad to fire naturally, but I think the best course is maybe to take this point of shock off. So this team is still firing at full effect and will immediately lose a dice if it takes another point of shock. So then he'll have that section fire. The section on the left is pretty well um, shocked up. So we need to try and thin out uh, the section on the right a little bit more, as it has got a Bren gun team in it still. So we'll try and do that. So that's uh, eight dice for the MG42 on the right, uh, plus two riflemen, and then eight dice for the light machine gun on the left as well. So 18 still. Oh, less one for the two points of shock. So that's four, that's nine. Only two hits. Let's now do another nine. Still only two hits. Um, so split two on the Bren team, or the Bren group, and two on the rifle group. So for the Bren, so one casualty, and it's light cover, so no shock. And then for the rifle group, they take a point of shock. There we go. Not a very good day to be a member of the Bren groups, clearly. And that is the German activation. So the Brits are down to just four command dice now. Um, as you can see there, having been reduced to just four morale points, and the Germans yet to lose a morale point. It's not going particularly well. We'll see which, how much more the um, Brits can make out of this, but they might voluntarily withdraw uh, as the sections are getting depleted, the Vickers has been wiped out, and no sign of the tank, which is kind of what they might need to try and have a chance of getting back into the game. So one, two, three, and four. Um, okay, so I mean, with the the three, we can try and bring the sh bring the Sherman on. That'd be something to do. 
the four will probably activate the lieutenant to try and get those two sections um, into action. Problem is they've just got so much fire going to be coming down on them because they're getting shot up by the Germans in the building here in addition to the section in front uh, and they've already lost one Bren group. Uh, and then the one and the two, we can use a two to maybe activate that spare section over there um, probably try and get them out of the line of fire of the advancing Panzer Grenadiers and then the one probably for the mortar. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do some of those things. Okay, so the two inch mortar lobbed some smoke and it went six inches long. Instead of landing in front of the building by the end of the approach hedges, it instead plopped itself onto the corner of that wall, uh, which isn't very useful. Uh, with the two, that section uh, has retired back over the hedge to try and defend the corner of the field and where the jump off point is. And then with the four, the lieutenant, the platoon commander, has taken a point of shock from each of these sections. And then with his last command initiative, he's going to have the section that still has a Bren uh, open fire at these Panzer Grenadiers that are plaguing them to the front. So that'll be six dice for the Bren and then four riflemen. So ten shots. Let's take those away. So one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten dice. So that is four hits. So that's two on each, so two for the reduced LMG team. And it's been reduced even further because they've suffered another casualty. And then two for the larger. And that suffers two casualties. Wow, that is that's effective fire. <laughs> Very effective fire. Uh, so we'll take three casualties out of these. Uh, and then we'll roll to see if the lead has been hit. A reasonable chance that he has. And he has. So the lead has been hit, so Junior need a hit. And it's a one. Uh, and ones are good, actually, at this, aren't they? Oh, no. No, wrong. Sixes would have been good. A one is killed outright. So we shall replace uh, one of those riflemen. And unfortunately... Directing the fire at the back here, the uh, German squad leader has bitten the dust, which is not ideal. So we'll also roll a force morale to see what happens to that. A two. And a two. Junior leader killed. Only minus one. So the, the Panzer Grenadier is down to seven. Uh, and I've just lost a squad leader taken out. So pretty good for the British. Um, but might not be enough. Oh, and the three was used to try and bring the Sherman in. But because there aren't any senior leaders off the table, it promptly failed the role to turn up. So uh, the, the two-inch mortar team there um, is probably somewhat relieved because it means they're not going to have to try and get out of the way for a Sherman. But uh, the platoon as a whole could do with the, the tank turning up. So the Germans get a chain of, point, chain of command point, uh, six that doesn't do anything, and then two threes and a two. So the German Panzer Grenadier section that's lost its uh, section commander was activated on the two, and as you can see here, has fallen back in the woods, slightly further back from its jump off point, um, recoiling back from having taken those sudden, somewhat stinging losses. However, as for the rest of the field, behind it the tank moved up slowly and rotated, crushing a bit of the fence in here, and it's going to support one or two options here. It can either try and support this section, which is now without a junior leader, but actually I think what it's going to do is support this section, which has hopped the fence and moved in front of the building, and we're going to use the uh, Panzer IV, it's going to fire its main gun, um, at that British section over there behind the hedges in order to try and keep their heads down whilst the uh, Panzer Grenadiers then move up in a position to try and overrun the British positions. So it's going to fire HE against uh, that British section in the corner. Uh, so that's five dice HE hitting on four, five or six. 
So it gets two hits, and it's going to reduce cover by one. So they're in, we'll say hard cover because intervening, there's fences and all sorts in the way. Um, but that's reduced to light cover. So they take a point of shock and a casualty. Ah. One, two, uh, a one, two, or three is the Bren. Nope. And the Bren. No. So the rifle team takes a casualty and a point of shock from the pans of four firing at them. I'll just quickly check to see if the... Well, actually, also, the platoon sergeant's there. Nope, they're both fine. Um, so that was the German activation. So now back to just four British dice. So a one, a one, a five, and a six. Now one, a two, and a five, and a six, sorry. To an extra chain of command point. And not ideal, a one and a two. So I think the only thing we can try is... Um, well, we'll have to try and put some more smoke down. I think I can't decide what the most pressing concern is. Either the tank that's going to blast away, or the uh, heavy machine gun in that building. I think we'll try and put some smoke down in front of the tank in the first instance and try and force it to manoeuvre. Um, and then with the two, we might have to try and move that section back. I don't think they can uh, go tactical on a two. Uh, anyway, let's get the smoke marker out. So we'll try and drop some smoke just in front of the tank here. Which, which section to try and protect is the other question. We'll try and pop it there. So, uh, six, so two, so that is six inches left, I think. Okay, so having checked, uh, yes, that section can go tactical, so they will do that um, in the hope that the Sherman is going to turn up and lend some support uh, in the next couple of phases, and the two-inch mortar lobs some smoke in the direction of the Panzer IV, but it drifted off to the left and landed next to some Panzer Grenadiers. So we shall move on um, to see if the Germans can press their advantage. It's not looking good for the East Yorks. So that's a pip on the chain of command. Two ones and two threes. So that's something to activate the tank with anyway. Uh, so activate the tank with one of them and then probably push that section forward in the meantime. Uh, yeah, so... We'll have, with the three, we'll have the tank fire HE again, um, direct to its front. So three hits. Oh, I forgot to allocate them again. All right, well, one of them doesn't do anything. So the point of shock is on the rifles, and as is the casualty. So they're getting whittled down steadily here by fire from the Panzer IV. And then the other three will we use to move that section up closer again. But we use the two ones. First of all, we'll have this uh, team in front of the building that has got its squad leader with it. It's going to move at the double to try and catch up and join in um, the assault. So that is 12 inches, so they'll move them up in a moment, and the MG42 is going to continue to pile the paint onto the Brits over on that side of the table. Uh, with nine dice. Scoring three hits. And reducing them to being in the open. So that is two losses and one shock all on that rifle group. It could go on to the adjacent rifle group again. Apologies, I've just noticed that. Uh, so the two casualties, or one, two, or three, it's on their own section. So one for each rifle group, and then they also take the point of shock. So we need to check to see if there are any leader casualties, and there are not. So two riflemen become casualties over there. Uh, that team has moved up to join their colleagues there, massing to try and overrun that position. 
Uh, and then for the last thing, I've realised that the tank as well has an additional machine gun it can fire um, at that unfortunate, unfortunate remnants, that section over on that side. Um, so it's going to fire that. Scoring three hits. They will get the benefits of light cover for this one. Oh, not that it matters too much. <laughs> so three is nothing but two casualties. Uh, a one, two, or three, it's the Bren. Uh, so the Bren is potentially down, and a rifleman goes down. We'll just check the leader. So no leaders, but the Bren is out, and they've lost another rifleman, which is a problem, as that is a team wiped out, among other things. So, uh, team wiped out. Four, uh, and that's always good, right? Team wiped out on a four is minus one, so they're down to three, down to three command dice. Uh, and in the meantime, over here, we've got five riflemen with five points of shock, so that team is now pinned. Oh no, that's not true. The uh, section commander's there as well, so he's adding an extra body, so they're just not quite pinned. However, it's not looking particularly good for the Brits. So I think on the basis of that turn, given that the Sherman hasn't arrived, one of the sections has been reduced by seven men and lost its Bren. This section's been lost has lost four men, including its Bren, and this section's lost I say, two men. Um, including one of its Bren group, so it's not a good day to be in the Bren groups. They've lost the Vickers, and again, there's no sign of the Sherman. In the meantime, the uh, Panzer IV on the edge of the field there is almost certainly going to whittle down that section, um, possibly even before these Panzer Grenadiers uh, move around the building and proceed to overrun what would be both jump off points. I mean, there is a chance they could be caught on the hop by the tank, but with only three dice left. Um, and to respect the plastic and metal lives of the uh, troops involved, I think at this stage, it being the Brit British phase, uh, the British platoon is going to concede defeat uh, and withdraw from the table, having suffered a grand total of four, five, six, seven, eight, eight casualties from the rifle sections. Uh, the Vickers wiped out five casualties. Uh, the Piat team never deployed, and the Sherman didn't deploy. The, the Germans didn't deploy their Panzer Shrek, and lost a grand total of six Panzer Grenadiers, including a squad leader. Um, the Brits suffering two uh, wounds to different commanders. That section commander, and also to the platoon sergeant over there. Um, so yeah, all in all, not too bad. I mean, the idea from the Brits was to try and get close, having got a jump-off point on this side, to the German jump-off point uh, just there, and try and take it to reduce their force morale. So that's why the lieutenant was here with two sections. And this was just to produce um, a base of fire and to stop the Germans also moving up on this side and overrunning these two jump-off points, as it was fairly likely, given the results of the patrol phase, that the Germans were going to place troops in that two-storey building over there, which of course they did, and then the Feldwebel used his experience to direct fire all over the place, uh, and these Panzer Grenadiers gradually moved up. Um, yeah, I'm in a good game, lots of learning points, apologies about the various rules and accuracies, I did try to go back and change them where I noticed them, there are almost certainly some that I haven't um, noticed the errors that I've made. Um, one of the rules that I remembered whilst doing this is that, of course, you can combine dice to create other dice. Um, and that, there's always a chance that could help the Brits at the end here, but I think there's probably a, a long enough game to get back into the swing of things. Um, I do tend to pick the rules up pretty quickly when playing through again. Um, so in the next game, I think what we'll do is I'll play the second scenario, which is the probe, uh, and one, or, one of these two sides um, will try and actually achieve a more specific mission objective than just blasting the other one apart. Um, in the future, I am going to try and do the Operation Martlet pint size campaign. Um, it's been done a, a few times, um, very entertainingly, um, by other channels, 
but um, I particularly like campaigns and also I prefer the dynamic of games where there's a bit more consequence to decisions you make. Um, so for example here, only for my own personal taste have I decided that the bricks are going to fall back here because of the uh, tactical situation the losses suffered. Um, I mean they could just keep duking out until the force morale gets completely broken, which isn't going to be too much longer because the section over there is probably going to get overrun along with the two inch mortar uh, and that will be the end of things because there's a couple of leaders over there as well. Anyway, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, pilot game. Uh, please leave uh, comments in, in the video description below. Uh, highlight anything that I've missed that perhaps I haven't noticed. I will sit down and think about it and read through the rule book to check if there's anything that I've overlooked afterwards, but it's always useful to have these things pointed out. Um, and also if you've got any comments on the general look of the table or the filming, um, the only limitation to this is it's only me playing the game at the moment uh, for obvious reasons. So being right-handed and this being a right-handed camera setup, that is a slight limitation. I have tried to keep it not as hand, hand cam shaky as possible. Um, and keep it a bit stable but uh, if there are aspects of the filming if there's things you want to see more close up uh, if you want to see the squads in detail after they've moved for example rather than constantly seeing it from this angle if you prefer to see some closer action and I can roll the dice close to the figures I just chose to use this field area because it's a bit convenient because there's no action going on over there um, then yeah please let me know uh, and I will, I will do my best uh, to try and improve those things for the next game uh, yeah, which will hopefully be soon. There we go. There's the Panzer IV in its dominating position by that jump-off point. Combined arms supporting the Panzer Grenadiers over there. Anyway, that is all for now. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this game, despite some of the flaws and limitations of having not played the rule set for a little bit of time. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next one.